so I made a video about the first LEGO Harry Potter game about a week ago, and I said if it hit 5,000 likes, then I would do the second LEGO Harry Potter game to finish off the series. And, well, uh, you guys definitely did it. So today, I got the Platinum Trophy for LEGO Harry Potter years 5 through 7. This is the final LEGO Harry Potter game, and it features 49 trophies in it. Most are got from the story missions and collectibles, with only a few requiring specific tasks you have to go out of your way for. The game begins with year 5, obviously, since that is the next one up. The first level of the day has you and Harry's quote-unquote brother, Dudley, just vibing at the local playground, trying not to stare at too many kids. Eventually, after lots of magical things happening, you end up in an eerie alleyway, which seems useless since you could have easily just walked through the grass around it. But aside from bad architectural design, a bunch of Dementors from the office show up. The Dementors! And you actually have to let them get to you to win. Yes, it makes sense. But after that tragedy, Dudley now has just as much PTSD as a World War II veteran, and also Harry had some spooky, spooky dreams. But he awakens to a bunch of men in his room. Hell yeah. These men help you escape the bad people and the next part of the level has you just ride your big ol' broom through the air as your balls feel the wind. You then crash in some park again and have to save three people and then use everyone's power of friendship to get Mad-Eye Moody out of the fountain because he is drowning. After that, you all teleport once more, ending up at the Black House. No, it's not a racial thing, but it is full of ginger, so take that as you want. After that cutscene, you also end up going to the Ministry of Magic because Harry is on trial for using magic outside of school. Such a silly goose and only one person agreed with me on his ban from school. You get a trophy after that also because this was the end of the first level. The next level for year 5 takes place all the way in the winter time and you have a grueling objective of saving the entirety of 7 people, which is a lot in honesty. And it also took me quite a while because you gotta get a ton of dumb items for them all. But once you get them all saved, you get the trophy for beating this level. Also, Harry's about to bag a dime piece, let my man cook! Back in reality now, Harry has been having bad bad dreams and wetting the bed. So Professor Snape takes it upon himself to train Harry's memory and we get to go back in time and replay all the levels we have already done. I know, isn't that just so fun? Basically, Harry ends up failing and the dried out nutsack shows up in his memories, leading Snape to give up on poor Harry for the time being. But unlike Harry, we aren't a failure and got a trophy. The next level has us fully explore and get lost inside of Sirius Black's family home. You pretty much just have obstacles in each room to get by until triggering a cutscene which he explains his family tree and his deranged relative who escaped Azkaban recently. Also, that same girl was in Fight Club, so she's a dual threat. And we got a trophy after that. Next level, you are trying to get to the Ministry because Harry sees something in his dream. This happens to me all the time and whenever I wake up, it's never real, so I don't know why he thought it was. Maybe Harry Potter is actually just acoustic. <laughs> Anyways, you get to play with a black pussy and make it travel through a bunch of plates until it squirts out flu powder for you to use in the fireplace. Sadly, the mean pink lady shows up and ruins the day, so much so that we take her out into the Forbidden Forest to torture her with a giant. What a day. On the next level, you and the homies made it to the Ministry finally, and this is by far the most action-packed level of Year 5. You get chased by falling inanimate objects, which which is crazy. No, but seriously, they added in dueling to this version of the game, and it low-key slaps so much, I forgot this wasn't Hogwarts Legacy for a hot minute. You also sort of get a boss fight with Voldemort, but he doesn't really die, even after taking away all of his hearts, which is some big BS. But he does give Harry a ton of flashbacks to his life and stuff, which ends in him pulling through unlike grandma. And we ended up getting two trophies for finishing both the sixth level and fifth year of the game. Year six begins now and the evil people stole Mr. Ollivander. What did he ever do to you? They also destroyed some bridge, but that's not as big a deal. You then see Harry and some girl is trying to get all up on that chosen one wand. Thankfully, Dumbledore showed up to save Harry. You never know what a wild female might be infected with. Anyways, Dumbledore takes you to an old professor's house and you have to explore for a little bit while also fixing it because the guy was hiding and thought destroying it all would be a good idea. What a genius. Genius. After fixing it all up, the next parts of this first level take place in Diagon Alley, mostly in Fred and George's candy shop. But after leaving that, you and the threesome all spy on Draco Malfoy and the evil people, also nearly being caught in the process by a deranged man. But then you get a trophy. Level 2 of Year 6 takes place in Hogsmeade, and the only objective is to give Professor Slughorn a drink. And for the life of me, I just could not find the dang mug, even though it was literally sitting on the floor the entire time. So I wasted a ton of time with my life right then, but it's not a big deal, I've done dumber things before. You then get invited to his exclusive party and it basically just ends with you having to clean up after him. This feels like slave labor, I won't lie. After cleaning, you fast forward to another party with a guy and this time you basically just enjoy yourself until opening the curtains and revealing an intruder amongst us. Mapo and Snape also had a deep conversation about feelings in the hallway. And we got another trophy. You are then at the Weasley's house and it is sadly being raided by terrorists. The entire thing is literally burning to the ground. Your objective for this first area is quite simple, put out fires of course. 
course, but the next area has you and a few homies just isolated on an island, being attacked from all angles. Eventually, the attackers give up because they were pretty much just here to hurt our feelings. And also, they left the house in complete ruin. But we got a trophy, so that's something. Next level has you back in Slughorn's room, but this time you were actually here for a purpose. To save Ron from falling in love at a young age. The worst fates. You do this by breaking everything in his room until searching mindlessly through his cabinets for the cure. Anyways, Ron was fine, but Malfoy was definitely not because you duel him right away afterwards. And Harry uses some spell on the poor dude, which pretty much would have killed him if Daddy Snape didn't show up to save the day. Harry got that cursed spell from this book, by the way. And you and Ginny then go to some special room to hide it because it's bad. But I think she misunderstood the assignment and laid a fat smooch on Harry, which was not a part of the game plan, and I'm going to sue. You are then paired up with Professor Slughorn and have to break your way through a bunch of vines guarding a doorway. After making it through, you end up with Hagrid and have a funeral for his dead spider. I would say rest in peace, but I hate spiders almost as much as people who don't drop a like and subscribe right now. Anyways, the level ends after some important cutscenes and you get a trophy. The next level has you and Dumbledore travel to a rock in the middle of the ocean to get rid of a horrocrux, which is this whole big thing in Harry Potter and is what keeps Voldemort alive, but I'm not gonna explain it all. You do, however, end up battling waves upon waves of the ocean people with water. Not sure how this is their weakness, but it is. After succeeding on the rock place, however, Dumbledore was ambushed atop his tower and gets killed by Snape of all people. The evil guys then threw a party. The rest of this mission was then sort of chaos and Snape completely destroyed Harry in a duel. But we got two trophies after our defeat for finishing the level and year six. Year seven begins now, and this is when Harry and the gang basically just hunt down all the horrorcruxes left and try to kill Voldemort for good. It is also split into two years technically because there was two movies about it. But you get the first trophy on the first level for using Ron's neat little light contraption he got. One of Ron's siblings also had a wedding after that and it turned up in flames like you'd expect. I didn't think Death Eaters were into divorces, but apparently they are and this whole mission was in flames of both real and emotional. But once it ends, you get the trophy for beating level 1 of year 7. I also unlocked every spell you can naturally, which gave me a trophy a few moments after. You also fight two Death Eaters in a diner, which was extremely random and I loved it. So we are now trying to sneak into the mini ministry to steal a horrorcrux and everyone disguises themselves as some random business people. Long story short, you end up dueling that annoying ass pink lady from year 5, and after beating her, she drops a little token thing she had. And you have to run away from evil people with chaos ensuing around you. Also, Ron got a quickie from a random lady because he looked like her husband. Accidental Riz. And we got a trophy after that. Next level, we searched around this gravesite for Voldemort's grave because it's important. After finding it, nothing happened. But a crazy old woman showed up and ran away screaming. We followed her, obviously, and just entered her home. She also had a snake infestation in the roof of her house, which I thought was kind of odd. And you get a decently long fight with it. The fight also composed of nothing besides you throwing things down his throat, and I kind of feel bad now. Just kidding, we got a trophy. You and Ron then went skinny dipping for the sword that can destroy the horrorcruxes. And it's honestly not hard to find at all, and this mission was very quick. After getting the sword, however, it is hard because you have to fight this demon that pops out of the top of a horrorcrux and tries to eat you. But once you get past whatever the hell that was, you receive a trophy. You then do a level where you end up playing as the three brothers who created these three different ultra powerful items a long time ago. But after all that mumbo jumbo, you get a trophy, so who cares? The final level for year seven part one starts with the homies being stuck in a prison. But after miraculous feats in a very unsecure prison cell, we all escape and then do a ton of dueling and fighting with the evil peoples above. And after all that fighting, we escape through a little teleportation trick, but sadly Dobby the Hell's Elf was struck on the journey and dies. We even buried the poor guy. After that sad occurrence though, we got two more trophies like usual to brighten up the day. So it's the final year of the game and it kicks off with more disguises except those ones are so bad. We had to just bewitch the poor goblin into letting us into the bank so we could steal stuff. Before the stealing, however, we had to ride these dumbass carts and shoot some red lights to let us through. But I swear to god, this one light was like impossible to hit and I had to ride around forever back and forth trying to hit it. I honestly went insane this was only 10 minutes into the level, so that's a great start. I got it eventually, obviously. We then made it to the vault and ended up grabbing the right trophy after trying many, many others, as you can see. This takes you out to some dragon, however, and you end up befriending it and ridding the world of the goblins nearby, which is a little bit harsh. But what's even more harsh is destroying the entire bank, riding the dragon out of there, and then getting a trophy after. What a start. So obviously that was a lot of action just then, which is why next level is a little bit slower and we just explored Hogsmeade again. But this level does end with you battling Snape in a duel, which was easy because this game is made for children. However, I don't care, we got another trophy. And then right after, once you explore Hogwarts, it is now filled up with evil people and we got another trophy for that. 
Um, because yes. You then have an extremely long mission where Harry and some blonde girl play with each other for a few minutes, until you play as Neville and have to blow up the entire bridge. And also, Hermione and Ron played with snakes again, but it ends with you obviously blowing up the bridge, and it's kind of sick. You also receive a trophy, of course. The next level has you all in the room for no requirement, and you are literally burning it to the ground. But before leaving, humanity strikes in, and you feel bad about leaving behind three enemies from Slytherin. So you are tasked with saving them all. Uh, just forget that one dude. He didn't make it, but he was a side character anyway. Easy trophy. I don't really know what the purpose of the second to last mission was, so here's the trophy for it. Now it's the final level of the game, and obviously it's a boss battle with Voldemort, except this time all the horcruxes are destroyed and he can actually die, which is exactly what happens once I beat his balls into his face. And there was then some wholesome cutscenes until ending with two more trophies like usual. And we are now done with the main story for the game, and actually have a decent amount of trophies finished. So like the last game, the goal is to now just go get 100% completion in regards to collectibles, which when following guides, it isn't that bad. Shout out this man once more, you're a legend my brother. But anyways, I did get a few trophies here and there while grabbing all these collectibles like usual. Now after getting all the collectibles, you then have to go buy every single character much like the last game, since it counts towards percentage complete. While spamming purchase, I also was getting a ton of trophies, but none of them registered until leaving the menu of characters. So I ended up only getting one trophy pop and was super confused. But when I went into the game's trophy list, I had received seven at the same time, which is why they didn't all pop at once. The only trophies I have left now are a few you need to go out of your way for to get. First being using every single Weasley on the Weasley item boxes. And after changing my character numerous times, I ended up getting it pretty easily. The next trophy, however, was much more annoying. You need to play as Voldemort and kill every single Harry Potter variant there is in free play. This means I had to plug in a second controller to make sure I could use both people at once willingly. And it pretty much just consisted of me instant killing the poor guy, swapping variants, and repeating until doing them all. There was then a slightly buggy trophy which needed Hermione and Harry to dance to this radio in their tent at a certain level, but you can still do it in free play, it just requires you to load a level, leave, and then run there fast to the same tent. Next trophy had me kill 30 of those annoying mushroom enemies, who I mostly avoided in my playthrough because they are stupid, which is why I didn't get it naturally and had to farm them in this one level over and over. And the final two trophies both had me duel Bellatrix. First with Neville since his parents died to her and he wanted some sweet revenge. And then finally with Sirius Black since he also died to her. But we ended up getting both trophies and then the platinum right after. So that was the Lego Harry Potter years 5 through 7 platinum trophy grind. I had a little fun in this game once more and I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Also, next video is Minecraft.